What's up everyone? This is Dr. Webb here. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. Also hit the bell notification so you don't miss any videos that I post every week. Today, I'm gonna to talk about a highly asked question, a question that I get a lot. I get this question probably more than any other question from people like from all over the world. It amazes me how you can put a video out and someone across the world can see that video and reach out to you so i'm just glad that my videos have been inspiration to a lot of people out there not only in the u.s but in i got emails from jordan from iran from egypt from germany from australia like all over the world it amazes me so but the question is international medical schools so I'll first start off from the medical student going to a international medical school for a, like a pre-med student and then from an international school to a U.S. residency. So my thoughts on a international medical school, and it, these are just my thoughts, uh, just my experience with it, just talking to different people and doing a little research myself, uh, but straight to the point, I personally would not apply to an international medical school unless it was my absolutely last resort of getting into a medical school. And the reason why I say that is because the international medical schools are extremely expensive. I'm mentoring a, a person who is a student at an international medical school and I just asked him, talking a conversation with him and having a conversation with him. And I said, so how big is your class? Oh, it's like a thousand people. I said, what? A thousand people in your class? I cannot imagine being in class with a thousand people. There's no way your professor is going to know you by the first name or know who you are when you go up to him for a letter of recommendation. That is crazy. I was in class at Georgetown Med School. We had some people who were getting their master's degree, so they took some classes with us. So our classes were like, you know, two or 300 people, but a thousand people in one class, that's crazy. I think international medical schools, I think they overcharge you for your tuition, and I think they accept a lot of students who are don't need to be in med school. That's why it's so competitive in the US because it's a weeding out process and international medical schools will accept you with a very low GPA, very low MCAT, and you get over there and you struggle in med school because you're not prepared. Um, those are the most important reasons why I would caution about applying to international medical schools. If you apply to US medical schools for eight years, you cannot get in whatsoever. And I know people personally who it took them five years to get into medical school. They applied every year for five years. Um, but if you cannot get into a US medical school, you need to evaluate your application. Like, what is it about you? Is it your interview skills? Is it your MCAT? Is it your GPA? Is it, are you an odd person in general? You just don't interview well? Uh, you need to figure that out. Going to international medical school, uh, it's, gonna, it, it, it's gonna be challenging. Uh, you're, you're at a place that is far away from your friends and family. Uh, you're paying all this tuition. And then on the flip side, it's hard, extremely hard to get into a U.S. residency. And that's the second part of this conversation. Getting into a U.S. residency from an international medical school. And if you're a U.S. born citizen or if you were born somewhere else, it's extremely hard. There are a lot of programs out there that don't take international medical students at all. My program, we don't take international medical uh, students or do uh, doctors who have graduated from international medical school. So the amount of residency availability spots that you have that are available to you, uh, it's limited. For one thing, you have to scroll, you, you have to score extremely well on your step one. That means outscoring the people with these top medical schools, Harvard, Yale, Columbia, uh, Stanford, Princeton, these schools, and you're competing with these schools and you're coming from 
South America or someone like that. I'm just, I just made that up. But you're coming from international medical school and you're competing with these people who are at the top of their class and doing research, doing everything in the U.S. And like, who is the admissions, the residency committees and the admissions committees going to pick up? They're going to definitely look at the person from the U.S. So that's why I say it's extremely hard. So if you're applying to a medical school and it's international, I would caution you about applying. Like I said, this is just my opinion, and uh, there are lots of people who went to international medical schools, and I know personally that everything worked out for. Um, the next thing I would do is, like I said, I, I wouldn't apply unless it's absolutely last resort. And then if you are a international physician, you graduated from an international medical school, or you're a U.S. citizen and went to an international medical school and trying to get into a U.S. residency, this is what I suggest that you do. So listen up. So there's three things that I would recommend that you do. Number one is focus on your you, your uh, step one. That's the most important aspect or thing that you can use to separate you from everyone else. If someone has, if you're international medical school and you're scoring a 215 or 220, it's going to be extremely hard to get to, a, especially a competitive specialty, but any specialty in general. Uh, so you have to do well on your step one. Number two is to rotate at programs. Most programs will take a international medical st student or a student in general who they know, who have been working with them for the last month or who have been there and they did research for a year and they, they know this person very well. They're more likely to take that person. The best way to get into a program, even with a low step one score, or even coming from an international medical school, is to rotate at a program. If you rotate somewhere and they love you, they like you, they, they see how bad you want to be there, uh, you get along with the residents and the, the nursing staff, and you have good patient rapport, they're most likely going to pick you up. But if you're just a name on the paper from a... a International Medical School in Columbia, um, why would they pick you versus someone who went to medical school here in the U.S.? So you have to take all your steps and you have to do extremely well on them. 250, 260, 270 on your step one. That's how you do it. The third way is to network. You need to be going to conferences. You need to be going to research meetings. You need to be at, um, I, I don't know, places that the physicians at these programs are at. If there is a pediatric society meeting coming up in Las Vegas, you should be there and just network, hand out your CV, hand out your, you know, your uh, business card or whatever you have and say, hey, I'm an international medical student. I know you're a program director at the University of Miami. I would love to come check out your program. Here's my CV. That person will most likely say, yeah, we would love to have you. Email my assistant and we'll get you set up. You have to network. So number one is your step one score. It has to be, it has to be way above average coming from an international medical school. Number two is to rotate at programs. You need to rotate. If, you, if your school allows you to do three, four rotations, you need to do all of them and work your butt off while you're there. And the third way is to network. You need to meet people, you need to introduce yourself, you need to go to meetings, you need to present research, you need to do all these things. So I think going to international medical school, you have to work extremely hard while you're in medical school. And coming from a, a international school or a physician to the US residency, you have to work extremely hard So also. So it's not impossible. There are lots of people who have done it. I know people personally who, have, who went to international schools or coming from a U, a uh, international residency and coming to the U.S. Uh, so it's possible. It just, you have to work extremely hard and you have to be at the top of everything. You got to set yourself apart from everyone else. So that is my thoughts, my suggestions, recommendations on those who are considering international schools or coming from international school to U.S. residency. That's my thoughts. Like I said, it's just the way I think. That's my two cents. This is Dr. Webb. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. You don't want to miss them. Also, in the description is a email sign up. I want to stay in touch with you guys, send you some email reminders, some tips, some 
suggestions, find out what's going on in my world so I can stay in touch with you all. So enter your email in the link in the description below so we can stay in touch. We'll see you next time.